Hi, um, I did a sort of cloud simulation in Bifrost and I quite like the way it turned out so I thought I would share uh, how I went about it and the setup. Um, I quite like the way it's, you know, it's got some nice variation in the sort of speed and the billowing and the vorticity and stuff. Um, and I also like the way it slowly starts to slow down and dissipate. Um, so I'll just go into the Maya and show you how I set it up. So this is the scene. Um, I'll just go through the basics of this. Um, I'm emitting from, let's get the perspective. I'm emitting from a platonic shape. Um, uh, just as sort of my test emitter. Uh, I prefer using these over spheres um, because you get sort of even distribution of vertices. Whereas you know with a sphere you'll get uh, like at the poles it punches. Um, and when you're varying your source properties in Bifrost, it's the vertices that store the information. So this is where the changes are happening. Um, so that's just the reason for using that. And then. I've got a plane which I'm just using for my render background and then this other plane here is using it as a collider so for the bits of smoke that you know might hit the bottom there I think a couple of bits waft out there um, you can see them sort of just colliding with it and not going through um, so that's a layout I've got a sky system in there as well physical sky and I'm using a directional light just to add a bit more oomph into it. Um, right, so that's a sort of basic scene layout. Let's have a look at Bifrost. So, this is the graph. Let's just make that full frame. Um, I'll just go through it from left to right and sort of, you know, get to these bits a bit. So we've got our platonic shape coming in, that's our emitter. Um, and then I'm varying some of the properties. So first one I'm varying is temperature. Uh, max at 500, min at minus 100. Um, I quite like putting things like minus 100 in because then you get sort of no emission. Um, so everything that's below zero basically won't emit any temperature, it'd be nothing. Um, or won't, you know, uh, won't have that sort of bumpy effect uh, that makes it sort of explode upwards. Um, then I am varying the speed direction. So we've got uh, X, Y, and Z here. Um, my maximum, my X, from the left to right, as it were, is four with a minimum of one, and then I've got a four in the Y, and a minimum of one there, and a minus two in the Z, and a two in the max. So it's sort of basically, if you look here, um, let's jump forward and I'll just hide that. I'll just jump forward in the cache. Have a little think about it. Just pause it there because it was taking a little while. Um, so you can see pushing it along in the X that way and then up and then just sort of a little bit going in the Z, two in the Z forward and two in the Z backwards so you get a little bit of spread. Um, be wary of doing too much sort of spread and explosive outwards, um, it will make your cache sizes really big very quickly um, because you're, you know, emitting into a very large area. Um, so let's go back to the graph. Um, if some of these things I'm sort of saying don't make any sense, uh, I'd recommend having a look at the other videos I've put up where I go through all these sort of things in a lot more detail. Um, one of the things to say here about this, uh, the difference between this number here and this number, and I've got three numbers here. Um, if you're, you should be using the latest version of Bifrost, which is uh, 2.10. Uh, you can get that off the Autodesk website. Um, there's been a few changes since the last videos I made, and one of the good ones is that you don't need to, if I make a new very source property just to show you, um, on a lot of things now, you don't need to. Uh, used to be able to add a value if you wanted to change the numbers of stuff. So if I wanted this to go like this, I would have to go in here, change that to a vector three, go OK, and then pipe that into my min, like so. And then when you went there, you see you'd have that min. Um, get rid of that. 
now you can just right click on these and say value type math float 3 um, and you can see it will just do both of them for you um, just double check that one yeah um, so that's handy you don't have to make this extra node anymore and that ha that's on virtually all values you can now pretty much just right click them and cr uh, create a value node oh, I don't know where that one is. Did that make a node? Yeah, because that's a slightly different thing. Um, but generally, if you've got a min and max or a value number, you can now, see, I could go back in there and go set value type, and it will open that again, and I could set that back to a single float. And it should change back, as you can see there. Um, so that just a quick, just in case you were looking at that, thinking, how the hell did I get that? Um, so... Moving onwards, uh, next one I'm varying is fog density. Um, so I'm doing a max of 20 and minus 10. So that's basically how thick the smoke is. Um, I'm doing this because I'm actually using this later to fiddle with the vorticity, which I'll talk about. Um, then we go into a source air, and this is where this is basically what you're defining as the thing that's emitting the the, the smoke, um, and the thing to say here is my resolution is says that absolute rather than relative that if it's relative then it's the size of the voxels are relative to the size of your shape um, but absolute is a sort of real world locked in size thing so if you change the shape of this they, your resolution doesn't change um, it's good for setting this if you want sort of absolute sort of knowing that it will always be this size detail wise um, so the geo detail is 0 0.045. That's how close the emitter is to the shape, so it's matching the shape of the object. And then your actual fluid detail here is 0 0.03. Um, not massively, massively small, um, but you know, pretty good results. Uh, go back and look. Yeah, it's quite fairly well detailed. Holds up from this distance pretty well. Um, it took on my machine six and a half hours to simulate, which is pretty good, I think. I think it's really good, in fact. Um, I mean, if I tried to do that in the old floors, it would have taken days. Um, so that's that. So we've got, after that, we've got our collider. And I'm just putting that plane in I mentioned. Um, I'm just changing that to absolute again for the resolution and changing the geo mode to shell because um, it's a plane. If it was a shape like a cube, you'd do solid. But shells are for basically open geometry like planes. Um, and I'm just putting the detail size down to 0 0.04. Um, and that's that for the collider. And as we can see, air source goes into the source, collider goes into the collider. Um, right, so now this is, these are the influences I'm adding. So this is where you sort of can change the way the smoke's going around. Um, just to quickly before I do that, I'll just go to settings. So Aero Solver settings here, which links into the settings. You just drag that in. Uh, if I disconnected it, so you just do this with all your ports. If you don't know, I'm just gonna have to think about it now. Sorry, I just paused that because it was gonna take ages. Um, because it was thinking about the fact that I disconnected it. So you just you know just connect like that. Um, the only thing to say about this before I go into these. Uh, influences is sorry I was thinking about it again when I reconnected it um, is that the only thing I've changed here is style to fluffy um, everything else is normal just left as it is uh, good things to sort of see here is the ambient tension temperature in the scene is 20 Celsius or 20 I think it's Celsius isn't it anyway it's 20 which is a number to think about in a minute um, so my first influence is a vorticity one, which will, which is what gives us this nice sort of rolling you get of the sort of cloud. It sort of rolls over and through itself. So it's sort of rollingness that you add to it. Um, and I've got that set to two, um, and the scale is zero. So this is a sort of multiplier of how much vorticity you have. Um, I've got modulate influence attached to it. Um, what the modulate influence does when you link it to something like this is it basically says my vorticity here is 2 
and it's saying here based on the voxel temperature so when the temperature is at 200 above make this to be equal to 2 and then it falls off down to 50 so 50 anything under 50 will have zero vorticity and anything over 200 will have two and everything in between will be a falling off down towards that number um, and that can be really handy for basically if you apply vorticity to your simulation um, if you don't add something like that modulation the vorticity just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and by the time it gets up to here it's just a sort of noisy cloud so by saying that only affect the high temperatures um, but it, as it cools as it gets off you're not going to continue getting that vorticity so you can see that there where it's just sort of starting just to drift around and there you're no longer getting that crazy whirling um, so uh, the next one I've got a wind but actually I think I just turned that off so I never used this in the end so that didn't get used um, so we can ignore that then I've got a dissipation just to sort of fade off so the density starts fading away over time a bit more so like here you can see it um, and I've also got one on the temperature so I'm sort of basically dissipating the temperature um, and they're quite low numbers I only have 0.2 there and this one is for the temperature is 0.1 um, and then finally I've got another vorticity um, but I'm, which is set to 20 which is pretty high um, but I'm modulating that through the density and I'm just saying anything over 20 will get full this full vorticity of 20 and anything under 14 will get nothing um, and you can see in my fog density I'm emitting between minus 10 and 20 so if you look back to here to the vorticity only at very at right at 20 are we getting the full massive vorticity there which uh, gets these sort of big rolling bits um, also what I've done is I've on this one the scale I've set to one um, it's a zero to one uh, number here I don't think you need to go any higher than one um, and what that does is it scales up the vorticity for larger voxels in the scene um, and I found that if you do scale it up you do get these uh, let's just stop and just play through you get these nice bigger sort of rolling you know these sort of big ones and then the smaller vorticity is what from the temperature because if you look here at this one which is modulated by temperature you see there I haven't got any scale on that so that's just doing a small vorticities over everything um, and then this one is doing the large sort of billowy bits especially at the bottom where it's dense and as it fades off you can see it just slowly nothing starts and the vorticity dies on these they just drift off which I thought was nice um, so then um, obviously all this is piped into the influences I've got my simulate aero my aero volume and that goes into my file cache where I'm caching it out um, and then we go into an assign material um, and I've got standard volume there attached to the volume material um, let's have a look at that quickly uh, just go not dag home objects only just have a look at this so standard volume um, if you've seen my other videos you'll, I've gone through this a bit more but you basically have to make sure you have voxel voxel fog density written in your uh, density channel for that to work um, what I generally do is just to get myself set up is I'll go to the Bifrost browser I'll open one of these up I'll look at the material and I'll just set it as a preset so I've got all the presets from most of those here um, and as you, you'll see that you'll have different ones when you like in temperature I'll have voxel temperature here at the bottom um, and I think temperature and emission as well anyway so but my settings here are two uh, my scatter is one I've got a sort of slightly bluish color very slight um, my transparency is 0.46 in the weight depth of one um, and the rest aren't being used none and there's no channel in that um, so 
that's that. Um, is there anything else to say? Uh, sorry, I was just going to pause while I thought about something else to say. Uh, have a quick look at the settings for the render, of course. Um, so, in your Arnold renderer, I've got four in the AA samples, the camera samples, three in the diffuse, uh, none in speculin, none in transmission, none in subsurface because I haven't got anything there in the scene. Um, in the volume indirect, I've got three. Um, and let's have a look at ray depth. Yep, ray depth. Um, I did at one point have a couple of samples in here. Um, it gives you really nice light playing through the the cloud, but it increases the renders by a lot. Um, hang on, let me see if I can find you a render. Um, I couldn't find any renders that I'd done previously, so I just quickly rendered out two more. So um, this render here is with no uh, samples in the ray depth, so it's just zero. Um, and that was to one minute 07. Um, and then this one uh, had one sample and took four minutes 19 so four times as long but you can see what's happening is you're getting more samples of the light coming through and obviously it looks a bit weird in this but um you're getting more information in your shadows as you can see there and it's just generally a lot more light bouncing around um so good for sort of very white fluffy clouds and things like that but there's a cost of on my machine anyway nearly four times as long to render it um, anyway um, so I didn't bother with that um, and I rendered it out at 1k so 124 by 124 um, as you can see I've got that's the render and that's my uh, where I move Let's do that. Is it? There go. Uh, as you can see slightly different color I did put a grade on it in post using um, magic but it looks so got that and that was originally that God, it's annoying when it keeps doing that uh, there we go so just with a bit of grade on it made it a bit more warmer um, and that finally that took nine hours and 41 minutes to render out 209 frames which is pretty good um, it's not you know the rendering at 1024 it's not really production quality but um, I was rendering on a local machine so just sort of kept it small um, anyway I hope that was informative and got something out of it um, as I say I was pleased with the way it turned out so I thought I'd share it Okay, thanks.